day. PT, it's good to have you on the show. Thanks, Henry. Right on. Yeah. Um, so, this film, There Will Be Blood, based on uh, an Upton Sinclair novel from the 1920s, it's in pre-production, so you don't know what it looks like yet, but tell me about it. It, it tracks the history of a lot of these guys that discovered oil in California in the early 1900s who, who started out as silver miners, and they sort of went from prospecting for silver and digging in the ground for that, and just sort of times changed, and they started digging for oil. And I had to find new ways to get it up and out of the ground. And so I was kind of watching The Treasure of Sierra Madre the other day. And the great thing about that film is they find the gold in a half hour, you know. So the best part of the film isn't finding the gold. It's what happens after you get the gold. So hopefully we'll do a little bit of that. And hopefully there'll be blood. I don't know. I was thinking I would call it There Might Be Blood until we finish shooting it, just to, just to make sure. Yeah, not it, to jinx it. They, they, not to jinx it, you know. So is, it, is this film trying to make any kind of statement as far as oil companies dictating American policy worldwide? No. <laughs> Goodness, no. I don't know how you drew those connections. <laughs> but, I, you know, what we got to do first with this film is just tell the story of this guy that Daniel Day Lewis is playing and kind of just think about that first. I mean, the sort of crux of the story is basically the relationship between him and his son and this town that he goes into and leases some property and tries to drill for oil. And if we can just sort of focus on the small things, the big things might accidentally end up taking care of themselves, hopefully. What made you want to base a film off Upton Sinclair's book? Like, why this, why now? Hmm. Besides, you know, the, the current events aspect. I think mainly I was... Um, you know, I think I was kind of I was kind of burned out, and I found this this boy this book by Upton Sinclair, and I felt like, honestly, out of out of kind of boredom one day, I just started sort of taking pieces from the book and and writing them as my own, writing them as a script. Didn't think I was going to adapt it, and, and they just started to stick. They looked really good. They looked really really good, and it was really inspiring. And one thing led to another, and you just you turn around, and it's a year later, and it's kind of become something else, and. You wonder where half the shit came from, and the next thing you know, you've got nine weeks before you go to shoot a film. And you're just like, which is where you are right now. That's yeah. So it's been a few years since you did a movie. Have you been? Well, what have you been doing? I couldn't. I, I couldn't account for all the years, to be honest with you. I, kind of life intervened and ended up having a baby and just trying to put put it on the side for a bit. And I think I just kind of stopped and tried to sleep late and, and concentrate on writing this film. And, ended up taking longer than I thought. Okay, so you've been working at being a dad and writing. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's fair that, enough. That's a pretty good excuse. <laughs> yeah, you're allowed. Okay. Let's talk about uh, the, the great director, Altman. Yeah. Uh, buddy of yours, influence on, on you. Well, I worked on a film last year in the summer called Prairie, Prairie Home, Home Companion. Home Companion, yeah. And Rob, Robert called me because he, um, he can't get insurance now because he's 80... Three, he's 82 years old, and he can't get insurance. So when he goes to make a film, there needs to be a backup director. And so he went to St. Paul and basically just sat with Bob at the monitor all day and listened to him tell stories, and we joked around. And there's not a lot that kind of gets him down or bothers him. He's got a great saying. He says, just giggle and give in, you know. And you just feel like, I get that, I get that. I mean, there were times when we were sitting there, and... I'd kind of get worked up about something on the set or say, Bob, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and he'd just kind of look at me like, what the hell are you worried about? You know, it's all going to be all right, you know. And I sort of learned, I like had a real kind of a new film school again, kind of going back and just hanging out with him. And it made me excited about going to make movies again. I think I'd kind of been put off for a little while and just was tired and burned out. And watching him work was just sort of like this smack in the face. Like, you don't get tired and you don't slow down. You, go back to work and it's really kind of it would be selfish to do anything else you know well let's let's talk about your films and, and the actors you use you you we always see uh well fairly often we see uh john c riley philip baker hall philip seymour hoffman and finally one actor who does not use a middle initial or a middle name uh louis guzman <laughs> and, and and they're all they're all great uh is there a why do you keep using, you know, this ensemble approach? You know, it's got to be a lot like being in a band, you know, where you feel like the more you play together, the better you get. Yeah. When you work with people that you know and it's going well, 
there's nothing like it. I mean, there's just nothing like that joy of watching an actor that you dig, you know, that you, maybe you've written something for, um, to see them kind of do something new with it that you didn't expect, or to... There's nothing also, too, like the relationship where you... where I can feel like I can help them or they can save me. I and mean, there's been so many times when we've been making films with the group that you just mentioned where I know that I've just gone completely out to lunch or completely out to sea and... And it's just such a great feeling when someone that you work with closely sort of comes and comes up with an idea or saves the day and kind of guides a scene back on track. I mean, that's sort of a great thing. You know, you're not you're not just a director out there trying to t tell actors what to do. You sort of got somebody that's watching your ass as well. And right. In in your in your films, you you tend to stay with some musical people as well. Michael Penn, John Bryan, and Amy Mann, mm -hmm. who is uh, also conveniently our musical guest later in the show, uh, obviously has you know helped you with your stuff. What is it about her music uh, that speaks to you in a cinematic sense? You know, she... I'd always loved Amy, and then when I... She had a song called Save Me that it is the end of Magnolia, and... She had given me a, a demo tape of it, and it just really affected me. And it was a, and a massive, you know, when you kind of, somebody hands you something that's such, it just feels like a trampoline, you know, like the, to kind of catapult you into, into being able to work. And when she gave me that, it was a real, it kind of opened the floodgates and, to help me write that, that film at the time. You know, something can come along into your life. And so she says, oh, just listen to this. You just... It, it helps you trigger, it helps you kind of organize, it helps you sort of now make sense of a lot of different things, and that's what happened with, with Amy, and that became a really terrific relationship on that film. Yeah. You can see that she's not, she's not just a singer, and she's not just a pop star, she does, she's got, she's got more to her. She's more of a, she's a writer, she's a storyteller, she's, a, she's, you know, if she wasn't doing this, she'd be writing books, or she'd be, she'd be making movies, probably, you know. Well, for your next movie, uh, is there any music that's being uh, a determinant factor in how the film's going to go? Not at the moment. I mean, I just kind of spent a lot of time listening to a kind of crazy cornucopia of stuff when I was writing the film. And, like crazy Polish pirate music, I keep thinking of it as this, some Penderecki stuff, you know. Penderecki? Who's, yeah, who's, and I don't know if any of it's going to end up in the film, right. but it's certainly, you know, it's ended up in The Shining and pieces like that. There's, but there's lots of other stuff that he's done too, but yeah. it was a great kind of uh, reservoir to fill up on. It's just pretty scary stuff. Mm. It was just nice to sort of well, I'm turn afraid. out the lights and listen to some of that stuff. It's, yeah. it's terrifying, you know. It's yeah. good for, a, for an oil movie, I think. Well... This is the Independent Film Channel. That's where our show is on. Yeah. So you have a lot of you know young, aspiring film directors who watch this station with great interest. Mm. And you would be one of those people they watch with great interest. Mm. Um, could you offer any advice to someone who is young, bright-eyed, and, and earnestly trying to get right in there? Mm. The one thing I was I remember thinking initially when I was trying to make films, and you always felt like... You got nervous that somebody else was right who was talking to you, you know, who maybe was in a position of power, like that their opinion somehow was was right or better than yours and somehow. And you, you didn't... I could never stop to think, like, no, it's just different. You just think differently than I do, and that's okay, you know, but I'm not wrong. You know, you can get filled with such fear, and it's really easy to get... to just get your heart broken and kind of sort of beaten uh, you're sort of attempting to make films. I mean, you just... It's a miracle any time any one of them gets made, you know? It's a miracle, and it's a miracle every time I feel like... It's a miracle every time a scene kind of gets done and through the birth canal and done. I mean, it's never any less of a miracle or, or any less difficult. Um, there's just a kind of... There just should be no fear, you know? I think that's... Just always remember kind of being pummeled by fear early on and feeling like, God, if I could have just got rid of that fear earlier, I, this this might have been a little bit easier. It's just don't give a fuck. That's kind of the best thing to do. That's great. Yeah. Well, PT, I I greatly admire you, man. I really look forward to the next film, There Will Be Blood, and thank you very much for being on the show. Thanks, Henry. Right it's on. great to be here. Thank I love you. this show. Thank you.